Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about some new incredible discoveries coming from our neighbor, the moon. These scientists very recently discovered unusual material on the surface here that's actually pretty common on Earth. It's also pretty common on Mars, but we really didn't expect to find this on the moon. And the material is known as hematite. It's essentially the rusted version of iron. But why is this so important? Let's talk about this in this video and welcome to Wodemath. So by itself, discovering a material that's very common on Earth on the Moon is actually not really that surprising. Mostly because today we know that Earth and the Moon were most likely created from these same two objects colliding together. But at the same time, certain things on the Earth only exist because our conditions here are so different. For example, we have atmosphere, we have liquid water, we have a lot of other things like oxygen that can easily facilitate the creation of this right here, hematite. Hematite, as I mentioned, is essentially ferrum oxide or iron oxide, or as it's more commonly known, rust. And rust on Earth is very, very common. But we don't really expect to find it in a lot of other places, mostly because oxygen is necessary for this to form. And a lot of other conditions are also necessary for rust to actually actively form as well. Now, the thing about the moon is that in the last few years, we've discovered a lot of really incredible things about it. For example, just a few years ago, NASA scientists were able to explain this phenomenon right here. What you're looking at in this particular picture is a phenomenon known as levitating dust or levitating lunar dust. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's tiny particles from the moon floating above the surface. But we know that the moon has no atmosphere, it has no wind. There is no mechanism that could technically explain how all of this is possible. And in the last few years, the NASA scientists realized that all of this is related to the static electricity that forms on the surface of the moon as a result of the interaction from the solar wind and also because of the effects from the Earth. And this is where it gets a little bit more interesting because apparently Earth, despite the relatively large distance to the moon, which just to remind you, is about this much, this is over 300,000 kilometers per second, which means that it takes light about one second to reach the moon. And so despite of all of this, Earth still has quite a lot of really interesting effects on the lunar surface. And one of these effects is in regards to the atmosphere of our own planet, or the thin part of the atmosphere that the scientists today refer to as the geocorona. For the most part, Geocorona is made up of hydrogen, and it looks like, at least according to the paper from last year, Geocorona reaches way, way past the moon. As a matter of fact, it sort of looks like this, suggesting that the moon is bathed in the leftover atmosphere from our own planet. And all of this, of course, influences the moon over a period of millions and billions of years. But this would not really explain the rust, because hydrogen doesn't really make things rust. As a matter of fact, Hydrogen plays the exact opposite role, it prevents rust. If there was so much hydrogen bombarding the moon, the rust on the moon should never form at all. But in the last few years, and more specifically in a paper that was just recently released, these scientists were able to identify quite a lot of hematite and quite a lot of rust on the surface of the moon. You can essentially see it as these tiny orange and yellow formations around the certain craters on the moon that seem to be a little bit more common closer to the North Pole and the South Pole of the Moon, and also surprisingly not as common on the so-called dark or far side of the Moon. And so here you can kind of see there's almost like a barrier where the hematite or the iron rust becomes more common on the side facing the Earth and not as common on the other side. And this of course raised a lot of questions, but also possibly explained a lot of things about the interaction between the Moon and our own planet. So what the scientists believe is happening, although it's not definitely a fact yet, it might become a fact in the future once we go and collect these samples, but for now we don't really know. Anyway, what they think is happening is very similar to this whole geocorona effect. But in this case, they also believe that it's not just hydrogen anymore. They think that a lot of oxygen is also striking the moon's surface and enough of it that it starts creating hematite pretty much all over the surface of the moon. Specifically though, obviously it seems to affect the craters a little bit more, and that's still a little bit of a mystery, but it also seems to affect the uh, polar regions more so than the equator regions. But the biggest sign here that it's most likely coming from Earth is in regards to this invisible formation line where the hematite is way more common on the side facing the Earth, not as common on the other side. 
So the fact that more hematite is found on the near side, which is somewhere right here, as opposed to the far side, which we don't really get to see from Earth, is sort of a giveaway that it's probably something to do with Earth's atmosphere bombarding the moon. And the further proof or evidence comes from this beautiful picture taken by the Japanese Kaguya mission that discovered that oxygen is indeed leaking from the Earth's atmosphere and is sort of propelled by the Earth's magnetosphere away from the sun and once in a while moon passes through this region known as magnetotail and essentially gets covered by all of this. One way to try to visualize this is by imagining the magnetosphere and the magnetotail of our planet and to realize that once in a while the moon is actually going to pass through the Earth's magnetotail and thus get bombarded by all sorts of different molecules that are escaping Earth's atmosphere. So here is what all this might look like as the moon travels across the uh, solar system and moves around the Earth. So every 28 days or so, it's going to enter the magnetotail and stay there for a few days and then go into the other parts of the solar system. Now right now that's just of course one of the explanations and probably the one that makes the most sense. But the mystery here is that some of these hematite deposits were also to some extent discovered on the dark side of the moon. And you can sort of see some of them right here which is the dark side of the moon and to some extent at least right now this doesn't really make sense, but the scientists behind this paper think that it probably has something to do with either the water deposits that could be here, or possibly with interstellar dust and various sort of collisions that may have occurred over time and created these deposits because they delivered oxygen which then mixed with iron. It's still not entirely clear how all of this formed just yet. But it's definitely a very important finding, suggesting that there is a huge interplay between the atmosphere of Earth and the Moon, and of course a lot of other unusual things that we are going to discover here once we go and try to create a colony. But most importantly, this also suggests that we'll have a much easier time creating an actual functioning colony here, because a lot of the materials that are present on the planet seem to be also to some extent be present on the Moon. We just have to start looking for them and try to be a little bit more thorough in discovering the things that we really need. Which also means that we should probably launch more geology-oriented missions to the moon and focus on trying to identify the perfect location for the next future, hopefully manned mission. Nevertheless though, this doesn't change the fact that the moon is still a very strange and somewhat dangerous place, and more specifically because of the effects that Earth has on the moon itself. As I previously mentioned, the actual static here is really strong. And it has previously been suggested that the static electricity and of course the static uh, dust that levitates everywhere can actually create really dangerous conditions for astronauts trying to work on the moon. So in that sense there are still a lot of challenges for us to try to overcome and a lot of new discoveries that we need to make before we can successfully establish a colony and possibly one day some sort of a functioning city here. But I guess until we learn more about the moon or until we discover something else unusual about it, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you so much for watching, thank you for all the support you've given me over the years, and most importantly, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe support this channel on Patreon, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.